I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on Data Engineering. In this episode, we return to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and I want to talk about how to create a stored procedure in Snowflake using our Python connector, which is the main focus of this playlist. And many thanks for a viewer request on doing this topic. Um, stored procedures are used for all kinds of purposes. You can create a stored procedure that will execute a whole bunch of different statements and you can, you know, pass in parameters so that, you know, uh, they're dynamic and all kinds of things. So they're very, very useful. And that's what we're going to cover today. So without further ado, let's get to our stored procedures on Snowflake. Looking for programmers for your project? Make sure to check out the links in the description. Okay, so just like we saw in previous episodes, um, you know, I've got my connection information here and I'm going to import snowflake.connector of which we're going to use the uh, snowflake.connect uh, there and make a connection object. We've got our user, password and account information which I've scrolled off the top of the uh, <laughs> off the top there so you can't see those but I put those into uh, variables and it's also good to uh, specify your warehouse database and schema in your connection so that you can sort of go directly to use exactly the resources that you want to use and so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create an SQL statement to create our uh, store procedure and it's just like creating a store procedure in other database systems uh, with a few changes. I'm going to put this in brackets here because this is going to take up quite a few lines. And uh, so what I'll do is I'm, I've got a project uh, table in, in, in this database. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to create a store procedure that will create a new record in the project table uh, based on the parameters that I pass in. So I'm also going to demonstrate how to use parameters here. Um, and uh, you can see, um, in this case, I've got create or replace uh, procedure new project, and I'm going to pass in a project number, project name, and project description. And what I'm going to do on the end here is I'm going to put in the basically the line break uh, characters because unlike my previous you know episodes where you saw me just you know, concatenate a whole bunch of SQL together. You know, SQL doesn't really care um, about line breaks so long as it's spaced correctly and everything. It sort of goes in as one big long string. However, um, in JavaScript, um, it, it does require you to, you know, JavaScript is interested in seeing where the line breaks are. And so, uh, we're going to use those here. Now, I didn't actually need to use that on these first few lines, but I'm going to do it anyway, just like we're sort of creating uh, as if we were writing it into, you know, like an SQL editor. Um, and, uh, and so if we were to print this out, it would sort of, it would look a lot nicer um, than what we're doing there. So basically, yeah, so we're going to put our JavaScript inside of the, the dollar signs um, and uh, as I understand it, you cannot use, you know, third-party JavaScript stuff in here. Um, it, it's pretty, you can use, you know, what JavaScript comes with sort of like out of the box, but um, no third-party stuff. And so we're going to create a block here. We're going to do a try catch block. I want to catch if there's any errors and I want to output that to my, to, uh, as the result set, I should say. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to run an SQL string, and if it works, then we're going to return success. And if it doesn't work, we're going to output a, an error. And so I'm going to create a try catch block. As you can see, I'm putting the line break, which is the slash r slash n that you see there. Um, and that is going to create a new line for each of these. And I'm also I'm putting the SQL inside of back ticks. You can see that there. Um, that's one of the ways that you can you can um, do um, the SQL or your strings in JavaScript. And the other thing that I'll point out to you is the uh, that I'm going to use a parameterized query. And I know um, there is some dynamic SQL that has been sort of demonstrated on the Snowflake site. Um, 
you know, I think there's situations where you don't worry. You know, it's not a customer facing thing, so you don't worry about SQL injection. However, I would recommend as much as possible, you should use parameterized queries. And so that is what you see where it's the colon one, colon two, colon three in, in the uh, CMD line there. Um, that's gonna be a positional uh, parameter. And so we're gonna pass in our parameters in the same order, and those are the column, um, the the columns that we're going to uh, be populating. So, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to create my Snowflake.execute, um, which is a command which is going to have um, some. It'll have two arguments in it. One is the SQL text, which is the CMD that you see there um, that we created. That's that insert into statement. And then the second argument is going to be the parameters that we want to pass in. And as you can see here, if I put in the binds argument, um, that is going to allow me to put in, um, you know, our project number, our project name, and our project description into, you know, we're going to pass that in uh, into our command. So that we're doing a proper parameterized query, which is safer. Um, and one thing that I'll note to you is make sure that you use the uh, uppercase there, uh, because uh, when you're when you're using um, the store procedures and, and that, uh, you actually have to use the uppercase names, otherwise you might get an error. Um, and so make sure to watch out for that. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll close that. We'll close the curly braces on that one. And uh, and then we're going to uh, sort of put in our return statement to uh, give some feedback to the user that the store procedure ran without errors. And so we can do that by using the JavaScript, JavaScript return. And uh, we're going to return, and we'll just return the word success. And, uh, and, and that will be sort of like the end of, of the successful part of our block. And then to uh, catch our error, we'll uh, do the catch statement and uh, we'll just return sort of like a concatenated message uh, with the error in it to the, uh, uh, to the user so that uh, we know what's going on. And that can be very handy for troubleshooting or if you are you know, trying to figure out what's wrong, um, passing back the actual error is is a nice way of doing it, um, and uh, and that's how we can do the the catch part of it. So we'll close out the uh, the the curly braces there on our try catch block, and then we can uh, close off the JavaScript procedure with the dollar signs, and then that's pretty much it. Um, I mean. Uh, we can do this in Python, which is great. Um, you know, we can put a string together that has both the SQL and the JavaScript, and we run it in Python. How much of a Frankenstein is that? Uh, but it works, and uh, and we can create some nice store procedures. Um, next, we can just go, uh, you know, we'll set a cursor. So we'll just say uh, CS is equal to uh, uh, connection.cursor, and then we'll execute the SQL. And, uh, and then we can see how, uh, what happens from there. Uh, so it looks like I missed some, some uh, oh, I missed a double quote there. And uh, I don't think there's any other ones in here that are missing. So I'll hit F5 and uh, let's see what we got. Okay, so it ran without any errors. It didn't blow up on me here. So, so let's see, uh, that looks like it's good to go. Um, so the next thing we could do is maybe we could try to use it. So I'll just, uh, I'll say, uh, we're going to use the call statement. So this is how you can call store procedures in Snowflake is use call. And then we'll just, uh, we'll say call new project. And then I'll plunk in an, uh, an ID for the number, 9112. We'll call this the Apple Orchard project. Um, and then we'll create an apple orchard uh, as that as part of our project i guess that that's good enough um, just to see you know uh, if our procedure is working as intended so we'll close that off 
and, uh, and, and then we can see what happens next. So we'll do a CS um, dot execute uh, SQL once again. Um, and, uh, and then after we do that, uh, we can sort of get the result set and we can see, you know, did we get a success or failure? So in order to see that we could go, you know, for row in, in cursor, you know, just print the row. I think there's only one row in there. So, um, and that should do it. Um, so, uh, from there I can hit a five, um, just sort of have a quick look over. Looks like it's, looks like it's pretty good there. So, okay. So I'll hit a five, I'll save it and, uh, and then see what we get here. So opening the connection, it's recreating the procedure cause I didn't stop it from doing that. And there you go. There's our success. So it looks like the store procedure ran correctly, uh, using the parameters and everything, which is great. And uh, so that's exactly what we want to see. And uh, what if we wanted to say, check the data itself? You know, we can do that too. We can actually uh, check our table. So I'll, I'll, I'll just comment out our execute on the, you know, on the call procedure so we don't create that record another time. And uh, I'll just do a select star on that table because I know that it only has a few rows in it. Um, so we'll do a select star from uh, project and we'll order by the uh, project or pardon me the ID descending and then we'll do a cs.execute again to to do our our select statement and uh, and then what I'll do is actually I'll go up and I'll copy or I'll cut that uh, cut that uh, for row and cs there because we're not doing the previous statement uh, so I'll say for row and CS, print the row, and then let's see what we get if I hit F5 there. So it looks like uh, it's opening, and okay, great. Okay, so there's our apple orchard, um, and uh, create an apple orchard, and it looks like our store procedure worked great. And that is how you can create a store procedure on Snowflake with Python. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to create a store procedure on Snowflake using your Python connector. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.